Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's coding tutorial, I will show you how to create this interactive background animation with CSS and JavaScript. It will teach you how to create and manipulate the style of elements with JavaScript and how to add elements to the DOM based on the position of your mouse. To begin, I have my project open in VS Code. It contains an index.html file with the basic head tag, the stylesheet and the JavaScript link. The style.css and script.js files are currently blank. First, let's add the HTML markup. You only need to add some header tags and then nest an h1 with some text inside, which in my case is PM coding. And that's it. I'll quickly start my live server, which will automatically reload the page anytime I save changes. If we look at the page now, it only shows the h1, but it'll get more exciting once we add the CSS and JavaScript. In the style.css file, I will copy paste some basics in. At the top, I am importing the Google font Spartan at a weight of 100. This I will link below for you in case you want to use the same one. In the root, I am setting up some CSS variables, one for the font and one for an off-white color. I will also link some resources on CSS variables in the description for you in case you want to find out more. However, even without knowing about variables, you should be able to follow along. Then with the asterisk selector, I am selecting every element and resetting its styles by applying a padding and margin of zero. Box sizing border box will ensure that any padding and borders we add to an element will be included in the width we define for it. Moving on, let's add some style rules to the header. The width should be 100% and the height should stretch from the top to the bottom of the visible screen, which we can achieve with height 100vh. All the lines you saw appearing should be positioned relative to the header. For this, we can add position relative. The background should be the off-white color we added as a custom variable. Finally, I am adding a border around the header. This is for illustration purposes only, so we can see where the header ends. Towards the end of the tutorial, I will remove this, but I want to show you something later on. Next, I am defining a line class. Every element that we add to the header will get this class assigned with JavaScript. They should all have a position of absolute, so they are removed from the normal document flow. This is important because it ensures that the newly added elements don't push other ones aside as they animate. I am adding a width and a height of 20 pixels. Later, we will dynamically generate this with JavaScript. To make the edges rounded, I am also adding a border radius of 1m. Finally, to be able to see the elements, I am assigning a blue background. The background color will later on dynamically be generated with JavaScript as well. In the JavaScript file, I first add an event listener to the document, which listens to the event dump content loaded. This fires whenever the HTML and CSS has finished loading and ensures that you don't get any errors because JavaScript is trying to access elements that are not present on the page. In the event listener's callback function, we will access the header with document.querySelector, which will return the first one on the page. Next, we can define a variable for the coordinates. This, I am making an object with two keys, x and y, which will hold the values for the x and y coordinates of the mouse. We don't have this data yet, so I am initializing both values with undefined. At the bottom, I am then assigning an event listener to the header. This will listen to mouse move, which fires any time the mouse moves. The callback will receive the event object as an argument with which we can call the function update coordinates. Let's define the update coordinates function next. As mentioned, this will receive the events object. In the function body, we then just set coordinates.x equal to e.x and coordinates.y to e.y, which are the x and y coordinates of the position of our mouse. Let's also console log the coordinates variable so we can see the values. If I hover over the header and open the console, you can see several objects printed. Going back to the code, we no longer need the console log. We can delete this and replace it with an addElement function call, which we will define next. 
the add element function does not require any arguments. The first thing here that we need to do is to create a new div element using document.createElement and then pass the string div inside. Next, you can assign the line class with new add. We want to position the element based on the values saved in the coordinates object. This can be done with new ele.style.left equals coordinates.x plus the string px. If you forget to concatenate px onto the end, it will not work, unfortunately. Then we also need to do new ele.style.top equals to coordinates.y, which will position the element certain pixels away from the top. Finally, let's add the element to the header with header.appendChart. Now you can see blue dots appearing where the mouse hovers over the header. The dots are very close to each other, which would not look great for this animation. I only want a new DOM element to be added if the mouse moved at least 50 pixels away from its previous position. I will add a condition to the update coordinates function. First, let's check if either the X or Y values are undefined. This is the case when the page loads, so we definitely want to update the x and y values and add an element. In the next if condition, I am going to deduct the value of e.x from the value in coordinates.x and check if it is bigger than 50. I will do the same for the y values. If it is, then again I want to update the coordinates object and add a new element. Let's check the result. The dots now get drawn further apart, but it is still not quite right. I'll try to illustrate with an example. Let's assume that we added an element at the coordinates x equals 500 and y equals 300. This means our coordinates object holds 500 for the x value and 300 for the y value. If we now move our mouse to the right by 100 pixels, the coordinate of the event will become x equals 600. If we deduct 600 from 500, we get minus 100. Although the distance is greater than 50 pixels, the if condition still evaluates to false as minus 100 is smaller than 50. Thankfully, JavaScript solves this problem easily with math.apps, which will convert the minus 100 of this example to positive 100. By using math.apps, we can ensure that it will always be a positive number, no matter if the mouse moves left, right, up or down. If we draw the dots now, you can see that they are added no matter which direction you are moving the mouse. Let's now add the dynamic width, height and background color to the elements. At the top of the JavaScript file, I am adding three variables. Const backgrounds holds an array with four different background colors. The large nums and small nums each hold an array with four numbers. In the finished project, we will have lines which either have their width or their height animated. For the elements which are wide, we are going to take a value from the large nums for the width and the number from the small nums for their height. For the other elements which grow in height, we will do the exact opposite. To access the values from these array, we need to generate a random index between 0 and 3. Let's define a function for this called generate number. This will use math.random, which always generates a number between 0 and 1. By multiplying it with 4, it will generate a number between 0 and 4. However, these numbers always have decimal places. To turn them into integers, we can use math.floor, which will always round the numbers down. This way, generate number will always return either 0, 1, 2, or 3. For each element that we add to the DOM, we need to run this function three times, once for the width, the height, and for the background color, so we get a random one from each array. We can create another function for this called create random numbers. This will create three variables, width, height, and color, which will each call the generate number function. At the bottom, we then return these three in an array. Back in the add element function, I want to randomly create either wide or tall elements. For this, we can use math.random once again. I am creating a variable called type num. 
I am then adding math.round, which will either round the number math.random generates up or down, ensuring that we either get the integer 0 or 1 as the result. If it returns 0, I want to create a white element so I can call the function configure white element and pass the new LLV created above it. If type num is not 0, it means it must be 1, so I am calling configure tall element. Let's define these functions next. In configure white element, I am first calling create random numbers. With array destructuring, I am then assigning the return values to variables called width, height, and color. In the description, I am also linking more information about array restructuring for you. Then I am assigning a width to the element with new width. I want to access one of the values from the large nums array, which I can do with large nums brackets width. Remember, the width variable holds a number between 0 and 3, so it will return one of the array elements. For the height, I am accessing one of the values from the small nums array. I accidentally wrote width fear, but please type small nums as square brackets height. I will correct it within a minute. Then we can add a background color with new background color and using one of the values from the backgrounds array. Finally, we can assign the line class and the line white class. The line white class we will shortly add to the CSS file. In configure tall element, we are going to do similar things. But for the width, we are going to use a value from the small nums array, for the height, from the large nums array, and as the classes, we will assign line and line height instead of line wide. Back in the CSS, let's remove the width height and background color from the line class as this is now being generated with JavaScript. If we test the project in the browser, you can see that the lines are already being drawn. It only lacks the animation. We can define these next. With add keyframes, I am adding the CSS animation change width. At 0%, I want the width of the element to be 0. We can achieve this with transform scale x 0. At 100%, it should grow to 100%, so I am adding transform scale x 1. You could animate the width of the element instead of using transform and scale, but generally transform is more performant and the better way to animate size. I am additionally also defining an animation for the height of the element, which I am calling animate height. I will use transform again, but this time we will animate transform scale y0 to scale y1. Finally, we only need to assign the animation to the appropriate classes. Let's define the class with the name line white. We'll set transform scale 1 so it retains its whole width at the end of the animation. As the animation name, we assign change width. Next, for the class line high, we do pretty much the same, but instead of scale x, we add scale y1 as a transform. The animation name should be change height. All lines should have an animation duration of 1 second, so I can add this property to the dot line class, which every line gets assigned with JavaScript. If we look at the project, the lines now animate in. Let's quickly add some styling to the h1 so it gets moved to the center. We can do this with position absolute, top 50%, left 50%, transform, translate, minus 50%, minus 50%, which will move it into the center of the page. Then I am also adding a responsive font size with cut, which will calculate the size depending on the viewport width. One final thing I want to show you is that the lines currently overflow at the bottom of the page. We can stop this by adding overflow hidden to the header. With this, our project is done. There are many minor changes you can do to alter the look of the animation. For example, you can change the size of the lines or their direction. If you want to see how I achieve these effects, visit the blog post I have linked below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe for more web dev tutorials. 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will try to answer. Thanks for watching and see you next time!